Hello everybody, you're welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be teaching you today on how to pick the perfect key for you to sing on. In music, we have a total of 12 keys to choose from. Sometimes a singer finding the appropriate key to sing can be challenging. Sometimes you end up choosing a key too low that makes you sound muffled, dull, unexciting, and most importantly, causing you to miss out on the brightest part of your voice that creates excitement in the song. Or even sometimes you end up picking a high key that you start well, but when you get to a point in the song, you begin to ask yourself, what in the world have I done to myself? Because you know there's a high note coming and chances are it's gonna be too high for you. In a nutshell, picking a key that's too high or too low for your voice will feel very uncomfortable for you to sing and the audience will most likely notice the discomfort in the sound coming from you. In this video, I'm going to give you some easy steps or easy guides that will help you pick the perfect key. Number one, as a singer, it would do a whole lot of good to know your range. That is, range is the difference between how high you can go and how low you can go. I'm telling you, it's gonna save you a whole lot of hassle and time. And um, you can determine your range, you know, by going to a keyboardist to tell you how low you can go and how high you can go. And this is something you need to write down or you, you need to know because it's gonna guide you in choosing your key in the future. Number two, go to the very part of the song you are about to sing that has the highest note and look for your key with that part of the song. Don't use the wrong part of the song to look for your key. Don't forget to include your ad-libs because sometimes your ad-libs sit on top of the song. That means you sing much higher than even the highest note of the song. So don't forget to practice with the key you chose and include your ad-libs. So like I said, use the highest note and sing around that key and then choose your key. Um, this is to prevent you from singing way too high or um, let me give you an example. Let's say we have this song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Maybe you use this part of the song to determine your key. And you'd be like, oh, the key is fine. What key is that? Key C. Okay, play for me. But then you start singing. I mean, the real deal now, you start singing in front of the audience. There you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Uh oh. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. So let's say this is a song everybody knows. This song, for instance, that note, birthday, birth, is the highest note in the entire song. That's what I mean. So use that part to look for your key. So you go, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Be like, okay, that's a bit too high for me. Take the key lower. So from C. Happy birthday. Okay, we're getting close up. Okay, okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy. Yeah. So you say, yeah, that's my key. There you go. Sometimes also challenge yourself and try higher keys. Not keys that make you strain or struggle or go beyond your range. No, I'm not talking about that. But your highest, most comfortable key because the tendency to sing a lower key is more prevalent than the, uh, the tendency to choose the higher key. Maybe because of lack of confidence. Maybe because you're not sure about your range. Most times, choosing the lower key may not be the best option because it kind of hides your true potential, robs you of your true color and potential and make the song, like I said, sound uninteresting, 
very dull, lacking luster. A third and final tip or way to choose your key is know the key of your original song and pick your key. Don't go too far from the original key. When I say too far, I mean don't go like three keys beyond it, at most four keys. Four semitones, well, musicians would know what I mean, but uh, maybe you're a singer and you don't know about semitones and so on. I mean four keys. Keys moves, move half step each time when you move accordingly. For instance, we have the key of C, right? Let's start from the key of C. Happy birthday to you. Moving up one step is mo moving to the very next key is actually moving a half step and you move to C sharp. Happy birthday to you. And then moving half step from that, you then arrive to a D. So anytime you move to the very next key, it is moving half step. So that's what we call semitone. Okay. Sometimes moving half step, half step may not really make sense because you know the key is too high. So moving half step may not really make much difference. That's why sometimes singers, they just move a whole step, move from C to D. Yeah. So remember I said, don't go too far from the original key. There's a reason why especially, don't go too far, especially if it's a female singer that sang the original and you are a female singer about to sing it. Well, because of the difference in voice types, that female singer may be um, a soprano voice. And you know, soprano voice, they go really high. Yes, that's fine. You may not sing exactly or be able to sing exactly her key, then drop it. But don't go too far. Don't go like uh, five keys down or four keys down yeah don't go that far you know what will happen it will begin to lose its original feel the song will begin to lose its original feel or texture almost sounding like a different song the same goes for guys don't uh pick a key too far from the original key especially if it's a fellow male singer that sang the song don't go too far you can only go much lower, very far from the key. Let's say this is the key of C and then we have C sharp, D, and then we have E flat and we have E, we have F. That's how many steps? That's a lot. Okay, you can only do that. Maybe the song um, is sang by a female singer on F, yeah? And you know, male singers don't sing that high. That's the only time you can go really far, okay? And what happens with the parts? Don't stick to the same parts. You have to rearrange the parts. Because if you sing the same part, in the original song, the soprano sang a certain, um, maybe they sang the melody, yeah? And it was okay for them because that's within their range. And then a guy now sings it and sings it on C. You're gonna come back to the same problem. The song is sounding dull and so on. You don't sing the same melody. The sopranos have to now switch to a part that is within that range. Okay, leave the melody for someone else to sing because the melody will now also drop to a certain range, which is may, may not be comfortable for the soprano kind of voice. Finally, always remember to warm up before singing because it enables you to reach your true highest range. There is a fake range. That's what I mean. There is a fake highest range. And that is that highest range you can reach without warming up. When you warm up, however, you'll be able to reach further high and reach your real highest range. And then you can choose your key with that range and also sing in a way or pick keys that enable you to use about 90% or thereabouts of your voice. Not keys that make you stay on only 10%. What I mean is this, let's say your range is from 1% to 100%. You know, you pick a key that just makes you sing throughout the whole song, just on the low side using only 10% of your song. You're rubbing yourself of your true potential and the true brightness and color and excitement of the song. 
Rather, pick a key that enables you to go through your chest voice, mixed voice, head voice. It depends on the song again. So don't be the kind of singer, I like to use this analogy. Don't be the kind of singer that's like that guy who has a phone, a smartphone, but only knows how to make and receive calls with the phone. There's a whole lot more your phone can do. So learn to use the full potential of your voice, the full color of your voice. Thank you so much. If you have any question, don't forget to put it in the comment section and don't forget to like this video. Um, don't forget to share also. Thank you so much and see you next time.